three, two, one. This is Nick. And this is Amanda. And this is the Performance Plate Podcast, where we give you bite-sized bits of information based on nutrition and exercise science to improve your overall performance. All right, on the Performance Plate co- Podcast today, we have a great person, Gavin Aiden. He's here today to talk about his journey as a world-level powerlifter, one of the best in the world. Um, just took third at one of the biggest events ever. And he's going to tell his story about the ath- just being an athlete and the athlete's mindset and how, what it's like just being one of the best in the world. So, Gavin, if you could ju- introduce yourself. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, Nick and Amanda, right? I'm very grateful to be Thank here. You. Awesome. Thanks for awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, I love doing podcasts. This is, it's an awesome opportunity. Um, also, because it's not just, of course, I get to hear my, my wonderful voice <laughs> myself. <laughs> it's also because I get to meet you guys, yes. but learn more about you guys at like a greater depth than I normally yeah. would. So I really appreciate you guys having me on. Um, yeah, my name is Gavin Aiden. I just turned 25, so I'm getting kind of old. Um, I do compete in the sport of powerlifting. I'm a natural lifter, tested lifter, so I could be in the IPF. Um, I have won a junior world title. I have placed fourth uh, at the last Open Worlds. And then, yeah, so we just competed at the Sheffield, which was an event hosted by a big equipment company called SBD. And basically what they did was they took all the world champions, some of the best world champions, and they invited them to one meet so that they could put them all up against each other. That's essentially what it was. Um, and so I was invited, it was in Sheffield, England, and yeah, we placed third, nice. we did well. We yeah, almost congrats. almost won, yeah. but uh, yeah, just more of more reason to work. So I'm, I'm very excited. I'm currently in prep for a, another world championship. It's in like eight weeks, so. Nice, yeah. awesome. I have, so, I have so many follow-up questions about Heartland. We'll get there in a second. Yeah. Gavin, thank you for coming on, and we start every podcast with a fun question that Amanda is going to ask you to see a little bit more of where your head's at with certain things. <laughs> okay, so if you were stranded on an island and you could only bring three things <laughs> to survive, what would you bring and why? So the problem is, <laughs> I think too deeply for these questions, Amanda. I... <laughs> Okay, hold on a second. Anyone right. that podcast does. <sighs> yeah, yeah. All right, so hmm, they have to be things, right? They can't be like people. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Well, we know you're not bringing a shift. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you're burning burning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, so f- for starters, because I don't want to go the smart route, because we could go mm-hmm. GPS, you know, all this other nonsense. Yeah, we yeah. want to go like hard style yes. raw. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> all right. So then. The first thing I would bring is, this might be a waste, but a flare gun for sure, I think. Okay. Just in case. Solid. Just in case I see a boat in the distance. Okay. (laughs) You know? Okay. Number two, probably like, I think I would have to bring um, a, like an axe or something that I can use Mm -hmm. to chop down wood and stuff. Yeah. You know? I like it. Because, <laughs> yeah, okay, and that's like a renewable resource, like I don't have to like fill sure. up with gas and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then um, the third thing, oh man, bro, okay, I want to say a barbell, but like obviously that's a brand. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, give us the power lifting version. Yeah, I, I want to say, like we got to get jacked. Okay? <laughs> Carbs and barbells. Yeah, I mean like we absolutely have to get jacked, but okay, but to be fair, to be honest, I don't know if this thing even exists or if this is possible, but I would probably try to bring a quote unquote solar powered water filter. Ooh. I you thought you exist. said you weren't going the smart route. Okay, yes, but I have to You'd survive. You'd be out here, so yeah, you would survive. <laughs> That's true. You survive. would survive. So part of, if, as these are very good answers, part of Gavin's mantra, one of his biggest things, and this is what makes me want to run through a wall when this guy says this, is he talks about burning your ships or burning your boats. It's an old saying from, I'm pretty sure it's the Vikings that made up with it, and it pretty much means, like, you get to a shore, you're burning your ships, and you're surviving and taking over the island, that's it. Oh, I love that. Yes, so he talks about that a lot, and so he's being smart, and that's probably why you want to bring the solar, because you're like, I'm not getting off this island. Yeah. I'm just gonna survive. I'm gonna survive well, <laughs> with you, a barbell. You, <laughs> just... know, yeah. you know you have to, you have to survive, yeah. right? And yeah, yeah. so, and I think like, you want to create opportunity yeah. to, to thrive, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, like I think that there's, 
certain things that you could bring that would absolutely be better than others. And yes. that's like, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, like I, th I think the most important thing is, forget like even the Highland analogy, it's really more so just being as prepared as possible, Yeah. despite the fact that you will encounter situations where you may still not be as prepared as you should be. Yeah. You still want to try to be as prepared as possible. Yes. You know, so. Exactly. Yes. Is this mentality what has allowed you to be so successful in your powerlifting career? I think it was actually probably the lack of that mentality that has forced me into the positions that I'm in. Because, like, my mom has always said that I have to learn everything the hard way. So <laughs> I fail. Yeah. I fail a lot. Yeah. And... I kind of just learned to like embrace the suck. And so mm -hmm. all those things really build the mindset or the mentality that I have. And that's also ongoing. Like what it is right now is not perfect, you know? Mm -hmm. No different than like when you started PT school or when you even started yeah. years ago in your program. Like, you know, you see the horizon and you have a toolkit that will help you get through everything. You have the power to do it. Yeah. And so it's more so an, a journey as opposed to like, okay, we just need to be at the destination. You know, yeah. so it's kind of like something that builds over time. Mm -hmm. Which is, if you, as me and Amanda always talk about, it's knowing your why. Gavin has understood his why for probably those, I don't know, 25 years now. Maybe? Well, what is yeah. it? we got to know. Jeez, oh, you know, you asked the tough question. <laughs> no. That's you know why it. it keeps you around, huh? <laughs> uh, I mean, well, so there's, it's multifaceted, but if I were to give it like, like general names, like compartments, one would definitely be family, for sure. Um, I'm very blessed, very lucky that I have uh, two very loving parents. I've got three, young, uh, three younger siblings who, whether or not they look up to me or try to learn from me, I still feel as an older brother I have that responsibility, so that's mm -hmm. cool. Um, beyond that, I think there's always going to be like little things that I find along the way that contribute to quote unquote like the why, but I think like internally I'm just hardwired. I just know that I'm born to be great, just as I know you were, you know, and I know you were, mm -hmm. in whatever discipline you choose to be. And I just, I know it in my bones. And so because of that, I feel this, like, moral obligation to pursue that, pursue that excellence. Um, and otherwise, like, literally, what is the point of living? That's the way I see it. You know, it's yeah. like, I genuinely can't imagine not <laughs> doing that, you yeah. know? So, so yeah, so it is multifaceted, but I would probably say it's it's all rooted in probably those two things. I'm getting ready to run through the wall. See, right? You get, right. Bri you yes, get bricked up. Sure no, it's is, yeah. true, though. I can relate you to that in different to ways. Like, I mean, obviously, I'm not powerlifting, but just no. in the sense, what is the point of living if you're not living up to your highest potential? Yeah, or at yeah. least trying. And yeah, if, you, if you get the lucky chance to meet Gavin in person... Um, do you find out that he's very tall? <laughs> he is very tall. He is. <laughs> and you'll find out that he has, there's a humbleness about him as well. Like, yes, he has this thing of, I'm going to be great. But he always says, what's stopping you from being great? Yeah. What's, 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 why can't you be great too? We can all be great. And like, whether you're starting out at powerlifting or you're just a new guy at the gym, they'll spot you. I mean, when I first met you, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I said world champion. Like, he probably didn't want to talk to me, and he's like, "What's up? Like, what's going on?" Well, like, that's you know, what like, makes yeah. people like you such a great leader because you recognize your potential, but you also recognize everyone else's around you, and then you help bring that out of them. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate it. you guys are gassing me. <laughs> I, I appreciate <laughs> but you, you it. You feel uh, that? Yes. You know what I mean? No, I appreciate it. Yeah, I think part of it too is kind of like one. I take a lot of L's. That's so fair. like whatever. It's tough because I know how other people may perceive. Like, you may look at Nick and be like, wow, look at what he's accomplished so far after finishing his graduate degree, right, and stuff. And there's going to be a point when you're in his position and you're looking even further ahead, right? And there's going to be someone who's currently in your position looking at you, right? And so you'll never truly appreciate the different perspectives. Um, so from your perspective, it'll always kind of be like, oh, man, look how much further I have to go, mm -hmm. not look how far I've come. Yeah. But it's also for me, too, like, not to sound like corny and cliche, but part of like I'm Christian and part of my faith is like this is not really for me and it's not me right so yeah. all of, like the outcomes they're not really mine it's kind of like like God's glory right yeah. mm -hmm. and it's also they don't mean anything like mm -hmm. I don't care about the medals I don't yeah. care about the titles the money like there's 100%. new world champions in every sport every year mm -hmm. I know almost none of them you know <laughs> so really it's like the legacy that you lead and I think that's through the impact you have on people and you do that via just giving everything you have, yeah. you know? And so for me, it's like, it's almost kind of easy to, I don't want to say be humble because it's, it can be hard. And I'm sure I, um, people may not agree with that, but I think it's easy to remember 
that you kind of suck. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. It sounds shitty, but like, yeah, you know, yeah, that no, ultimately it's easy to remember that you definitely, you're just like everyone else. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, it's just blood, sweat, and tears that separates, you know, people. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So. yeah. And when you say you take a lot of L's, the, the, I hear it all the time of you're not losing or failing, you're taking lessons. And through your journey, you've learned over a lot. So let's get back to where did Gavin start in his athletic journey? And then how did you get to world champion level Gavin yeah. that you are now? Yeah, that's a really great question. So I can take you guys as far back as I can remember. So basically, uh, I was born and raised in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up playing whatever sports, like, quote unquote, the Bronx offered, you yeah. know? So like we didn't have like fields and stuff. So I couldn't really play football at that time. Mm -hmm. um, but I was in different like leagues and stuff, and so that got me involved in fitness. And then once I was like 12, I want to say, my parents um, were able to hire like these two very Italian uh, <laughs> personal trainers from <laughs> City <laughs> Island. Nice. And, uh, yeah. And so, and we just did calisthenics training, and like, and it was cool. It was fun. And then as soon as I turned 14, New York Sports Club allowed me to lift weights. So that's when I went in there. Um, we couldn't afford at the time a uh, personal trainer, so mm -hmm. I kind of just like worked out deals with people, whether it was like cleaning stuff up or whatever. And I had a trainer uh, for about two months, and that's kind of like where I like learned the ropes a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so that's how I got into weight resistance training. But I also got lucky because at that time, I think that's when YouTube was like really a thing, like started blowing up. Yeah. So I had access to like watching all of Arnold's videos, mm -hmm. watching CT Fletcher, Ronnie. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then like the new age guys like Christian Guzman and stuff and so I was able to soak in stuff as I was progressing mm -hmm. but I was always lifting for sports so throughout middle school and high school football was probably the number one um, but outside of that I did uh, I, I bought different martial arts styles I did equestrian polo um, yes, I know. One. Very, uh, we're not that a one. real yeah. renaissance man, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not great at one thing but we're pretty good at most things. <laughs> um, what else did I do? Yeah, I swam for a year in high school. Uh, I did rugby for a little bit. So I kind of like hopped around, but mm -hmm. lifting had always stayed consistent. And then long story short, got to college. Going into college, I was training out of an Olympic weightlifting academy. I thought I wanted to go to the Olympics for uh, Olympic weightlifting. And, um, and I was having a lot of fun with it and I was doing really, really well. Mm -hmm. But once I went to college, and I'm sure you guys might agree, A, it's tough to balance training, serious training with yeah. school. But B, you need equipment, like mm -hmm. special equipment for special things. Yeah. And the schools that I went to, like they're, they had great gyms, but they just did, they were not outfitted for Olympic weightlifting, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and anybody who knows Olympic weightlifting training, you literally take like 10 singles throughout your whole freaking yeah. prep or your, yeah. your whole session and it's like three hours long, you know? Yeah. So, um, so that quickly transitioned me into my own style of like power building. Mm -hmm. And then I remember like I had transferred to Colgate University, which is where I had my bachelor's degree from in psychology. Um, and I remember, I think it was like my junior year, I left the gym, was feeling pretty shitty. I was kind of like, it was like a low in my life. Mm -hmm. And um, I left the gym and I felt like I had been training really hard, but for like, for what? Mm -hmm. You had nothing to show for it, yeah. you know? And so that's when I started looking up powerlifting records. And at the time, my total was like nowhere near <laughs> what it needed to be. But in my head, I was like borderline delusional. I was like, oh, I just need like two years and I can be the best in the world. Yeah. And so that, that's what started it. I signed up for my first meet and got a coach. And from there on, you know. It was Wasn't like, it two years too? I think, right? You yeah, know? it was It was about, two, it was almost exactly <laughs> two years. At, yeah, yeah, actually. Actually, yeah, it was two years. <laughs> that's wild. I became a junior world champion. Yeah, yeah, That's insane to think about. Put it out there. He yeah. put it out there. He uh, built it up from that and just like transitioned into powerlifting and was like, listen, this is what I'm going to do. And just was like, yeah, I'm going to kill it. But that's one of the things too. You said it and you believed yes. it. Yes. You know? Yeah. We all sit there and we want to believe it. Have you done that with with something before that comes to mind? Can, no, I can't think of it. <laughs> no. Are you, are you no, I'm just curious. Oh, like... oh. I thought you were specific something we talked about before with no, the 50 no, mile no. hike. <laughs> well, I feel like you, you've come... A f like a long way so War Room's been open for like a year and a half now I want to yeah. say maybe close, closing it on two years yeah. almost yeah okay, August so, I think it's two years yeah so a little over a year and a half and from the inception of that till now like at one point you didn't have a real like 
business just yet. I think you were still yeah. working under people and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And now you work almost full time out of the gym. Yeah. You also work here yep. and stuff, and you're scaling up. You started the podcast. Yeah. So that right there is true. An that did come right to mind. And that's okay. Like, yeah. Oh, um, it's true. Yeah. Okay. That that's true. I'm thinking athletic things. Because you like, like, like you feel like you probably always said that. Put it out there. You knew it was yeah. gonna happen. Yeah. Always knew I was. Well, yeah. dude, that's that's the biggest yeah. thing that people forget is like it has. Bro, anything you do in training, it can be applied to every other area of your life, your yes. relationships, your careers. It doesn't matter. You yeah. Know? It's the principles, you know? Mm-hmm. It's not like the actual details of it. No. So. Yeah. It's the discipline yeah. to show up every day, yeah. you know? Like, and I always feel like that's, like, why I coach is that personal development piece. Mm-hmm. It's just, like, my vehicle of how I can help someone do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's through training and through yeah. nutrition. Exactly. What is What is something that you're working on that you feel like, You've kind of had to, I don't want to say put it out there, but believe in. I should have known that question was going to come back. Um, well, business for sure, because mm-hmm. I, I always like, I think back to freshman year of college, and I was like, I'm going to have my own business one day. And now I have it. It's what I do full time, but yeah. I, you know, kind of similar to you. Yeah. So I always put that out there. But And traveling everywhere. Traveling everywhere. That was her yeah. main thing with business. She yes. was like, oh, I want to just sit in an office all day. Yeah. So now she's very lives. important to me. Yes. So yeah. sometimes she lives in Denver. All oh, last year she sometimes. was in Denver. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No, sometimes okay. Utah. <laughs> sometimes Utah. Oh, I want to visit Utah so much. Oh, I never know where she is half the time. She's <laughs> luckily here for the next month, if I got it right. Yeah. Month. Till June. Yeah. Yeah. Till uh-huh. June. Um. So same concept is like, we put it out there. We believe we can. Mm-hmm. And you kind of just have to. Yeah. There's gonna be days where I'm sure Gavin's felt it. I'm sure Amanda's felt it. Where your your self doubt mm-hmm. is kicking your ass. I just thought of something the other day or last Saturday I was went out and I ran into someone that used to work at a restaurant I used to be a host at mm-hmm. and he for some reason he had talked we were talking about Colorado and he was like oh yeah you always used to talk about Colorado and I was like oh yeah I moved there yeah and he's like get out and I was like yeah I moved there and that just exactly yeah because you just were like listen this is what I want to do I'm going to make it happen no matter what and you don't know that's where like Gavin was saying it's the journey You'll yeah. get there, but, like, what are we applying it through, and how are we working through it? Yeah. You know, like, yes. Put it into existence first. You yeah. can do it with anything. Gavin said he wanted to be a world champion yeah. at something. Yeah. Which we're still, like, you, low-key you're, working on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're one of the best in the world. Um, should have been the best in the world, but that's besides the point. Yeah. So let us, like, what, if someone's getting into, like, wanting to put it out there, in your opinion, Gavin, like, like we're saying, believe in something, just... We had this, you felt it in your bones, you say. Amanda and I had this inclination inside us, like, we're going to do this, and we don't care how we're going to do it. It's going to get done because we fully believe that we should run our own business, or even you consider, you run your own business too, Gav. Like, Mm -hmm. you do that. Mm -hmm. You're a power lifter as well, but you also run your own business. You have your app, right? Yeah, you have your app, Mm -hmm. um, your Instagram, your TikTok is blowing up, your Instagram blows up all the time. So you have your YouTube channel. So you do that as well. So, like, what is something you tell yourself every day, like, okay, you put it out there, but what is, like, one of those things that you're, like, to help you kind of battle those self-doubts, we'll say, because everyone has them. Um, I mean, I think that I don't really have a correct answer because mm-hmm. I'm always trying to figure that out, and that's something that I definitely struggle with. Yeah. But I think what helps me a lot is uh, I'm a very creative person, very mm-hmm. visual person, so for me... Um, I make vision boards, I nice. write out what I want and what I need. Um, more important than that, I kind of do two things. So like from a visionary perspective, mm-hmm. the first thing I do is I take a look at all of the people that I know of or that I can look up um, that I aspire to be like in some way, yeah. right? So I'll put together a list of individuals. And for example, it could be, let's say Arnold, uh, mm-hmm. Mike Tyson, Ray Lewis, and take the qualities that you want from each person, right? and then put them to, together to create this like ideal, yeah. you know? And then that's what you kind of strive towards. And in every area, you know, there are people I know who are just, have really strong uh, romantic relationships. And then there are people who are really great athletes, really great entertainers, great business, order, uh, business owners. So mm-hmm. like, you take these pieces and you create this ideal. The second thing is, I'll think about like, truly what I feel compelled to do, passionate about things that I want to do, or things that are really cool to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, like quite literally envision myself in the highest possible uh, arena in that, right? So like if it's 
powerlifting, it's not just world champion, it's the best in the world, yeah. period, right? Yeah, yeah. If it's um, acting, it's the best roles that you could possibly get. Yes. You know, whatever it is, it's always thinking of yourself in the greatest light possible because you know that that's what you're meant for. Mm -hmm. You are hard, you, you have the potential, you are hardwired for it. Um, when it comes down to the nitty gritty, I think it's just a matter of having that vision, believing in it, and then reverse engineering it so you figure out what you need to do to do the work. Yes. And that's where like, network can really help mm -hmm. not so much as in the sense of like people can present opportunity to you because you do need to be prepared for that yeah. opportunity more so people can just guide you you know people can teach you what you need to learn good and bad some people will burn you some people will help you you yeah. know and, and these are everything will always be an opportunity for you to learn if you look at it that way mm -hmm. so yeah so you kind of just reverse engineer the process figure out like like for becoming a, a world-class athlete it's like super fucking easy like it's the process is, has been done yeah, so yeah, yeah. you just have to look at it and be like okay if i want to be a world champion powerlifter all i need to do first i need to compete yep. i need to qualify for nationals then i need to win nationals go to worlds win worlds done like that's that's simple like, yeah. that's really simple so then when you break that down further it's like okay i need to get stronger sure mm -hmm. what's the best way to get stronger well i should probably hire a really good coach yep. maybe hire a really good nutritionist check my sleep and then once that stuff's locked in, what else can we do? If you do those things, man, like you, chances are you will absolutely get to where you want to go way faster than you think you will. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. so it's that process, but just applied to like everything. Yeah. yeah, just reverse engineer it backwards. And coming back to your question on confidence, would you say sticking to the process and seeing it through actually helps build the self confidence? Yeah, well, showing up for yourself, you know, but also That's going it. through pain. Like you have to, dude. Like I mean, I can't speak for anybody else. Mm -hmm. I'm really bad at faking my confidence. Um, for me, I have to almost like, I have to endure pain. Like I have to go yeah. through a lot of hard stuff mm -hmm. for me to have confidence because what it does is two things. It numbs me in a way. So I no longer really care what happens. Mm -hmm. I don't even care about the outcome anymore. Yeah. Um, but then the other thing is it kind of like, it gives you this like really hard bedrock of foundation of, well, I've been through worse, yeah. you know? So like, this is what the fuck is this? Yeah. This is nothing, you know what totally. I mean? Yeah. Um, and it, it just helps you put things into perspective. And um, yeah, yeah, I would say that's probably how I how I personally go about increasing you know, confidence. Yeah. And stuff, yeah. Makes yeah. sense. I no, mean, it does. You got to start somewhere, build up from that. But yeah, if you go through hardships. But I'm genuinely curious too, because it's something that I've always struggled with and yeah. continue to struggle with. We yeah, all do. You're not the only yeah. one, man. Yeah. There's a lot of people, and like I got into coaching years ago. Mm -hmm. um, because of that, because like mm -hmm. there are a lot of guys, like for me, I always, like lifting weights wasn't just something I really loved to do. It was an outlet in some ways, but it also gave me a lot of confidence, you know? So like, I know what it can do for other people and push-ups don't cost a penny. So, yeah. you know, so <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> true. realistically, yeah. Yeah. you have no choice but to do it. And, and that's the, um, yeah, I think everybody will develop their confidence in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the easiest way is to suffer because again, then you know your limits. So it's almost like, um, and me and my, a lot of my friends talk about this too in, in, the, in the powerlifting world, where it's like, especially like the top guys, mm -hmm. where it's like, you kind of need to lose a couple times before you can win. And it's not so much because you need that dog, like you need to be yeah. hungry, we're all hungry. Mm -hmm. It's because you need to show yourself that like, oh shit, it's not that bad. Like, yeah, I failed, I didn't get what I needed or, or what I was gunning for. And this is it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and so working. now, yeah, so now it's like you almost embrace it. For me, what's helped me go beyond that, and I now kind of like look forward to failing in a way. Like I look forward to the pain and the the possibility of dying. Like that fires me up. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't always like that. And I think for a lot of people, the confidence will come with showing up for yourself. If you say you're going to do it, just do it. Yeah. And then just go through the suck. Like if you do something, I think you guys know Andrew Huberman. Mm -hmm. You know who that is? Yeah. So yeah. I was listening to some of his podcasts. I really appreciate his stuff. And he was saying that earlier, like, in order to hack the dopamine system and hack your productivity, mm. just do something harder than the thing you're trying to do, right? Yeah. And that can come in any form, you know, whether it's yes. a cold shower or whatever it is. Yeah. So, you know, and that's that's literally what it is for, from a confidence perspective. It mm. genuinely yeah. is just like, go through the suck and whatever you're supposed to do or should be doing is not gonna be as bad. Right? Yeah. It's funny you mentioned Andrew Grimm because he's actually coming on next week. Really? Yeah. That's sick. That's awesome. That's it's gonna phenomenal. be amazing. It's gonna be wild. Yeah. Um. Yes. Yeah, so. No, it's true though. It, not no, it's not yeah. that, that, no. what you're that saying. That would be amazing. <laughs> you were like, dude, what? Dude, I was like, I was like, yo, that's sick. Fucking yeah. congratulations, bro. You're like, why did I? Why did you not tell me that? Um. But yeah, you got to manifesting that by the yeah, way. Yeah, you'll be on our podcast one day. One day. One day. Um. Yeah, that would be amazing. But yeah, you got to embrace the suck. You got to build up 
from that. And like Gavin said, you gotta lose sometimes. Sometimes you gotta take that L to understand where you are and even not even make you hungrier because you're already hungry, but like, oh crap, like that wasn't what I wanted, but I gotta keep pushing through and keep building that. And then you to show up after a loss, which we'll get into um, as well with some of the, I wouldn't say the losses, but some of the things that have happened to you in your competitive world. And how do you show up after that? So tune in next week, not even next week, tune in on the next episode to listen to how Gavin continues to build on being a better person as well as athlete after taking L's as he calls them.